We built a 12-foot outboard-powered skiff to design number 169 by Paul Gartside. We built it at the Wooden Boat Centre Tasmania in the picturesque town of Franklin on the Huon River, south of Hobart. The centre is a magic place where the skills of traditional wooden boat building have been kept alive since the 1990s. I've been a wooden boat builder for over 50 years and I was enticed out of retirement to run this course and build a boat. As usual, we started with lofting, which is drawing the plans out full size. So after a brief introduction to the process, we drew out the grid on sheets of MDF painted white. Then we drew in the shear line, the upper edge of the gunnel in profile, then drew the same line only viewed from above. The designer gave all of the measurements in a table of offsets. Battens were bent around nails and we carefully sighted along the battens to check they were fair. We only had to make minor adjustments. The designer's measurements produced very fair lines. Then we drew in the keel and rabbit in profile. This is not a how-to video on lofting. I've already got two videos on Smithy's Boatshed channel showing how to go about lofting. Episodes 1 and 2 of my traditional clinker planking series. You can also check out my book Wooden Boat Building, the Sydney Wooden Boat School Manuals. We used tick strips to mark the location of the top and bottom of each station on the body plan. Then the offset table to fill in all of the other measurements, connecting with battens bent around nails. Very few corrections were needed, far less than many boats I've built. After we'd lofted it all to agreement and marked in the stem, keel and transom and deducted the planking thickness, we started to make bits of the boat. The transom, along with most of the boat, is built from hewn pine, a very durable and increasingly rare timber. We built it up from three boards about 200 millimetres or 8 inches wide. Each matching edge had to be jointed dead straight. An aluminium straight edge is a useful tool in this process. The aluminium leaves a mark on the high spots. But the proof is in fitting the boards together for a light, tight joint. As per the plans, we laminated the stem. But as the owner will be varnishing the outer part of the stem, we decided to make the outer stem from a solid hue and pine crook or naturally bent timber. So at this stage, we laminated just the inside stem. We made this out of celery top pine, another local timber that's a bit stronger and heavier than hue and pine. We bent the laminations around a series of brackets screwed directly to the stem drawing on the lofting. As always, we did a dry run, then laid down sheet plastic and applied epoxy glue to both sides of each lamination. and bent them round and clamped them in place.
you might have noticed another boat coming together in the background. John, a retired pattern maker and builder, is building his own clinker ply dinghy to the centre's Percy design, under the guidance of Sarah, who's done a few of this design. We'll see more of this one in future episodes. We also marked out the stern knee and made a thin plywood pattern to mark and cut the knee from a hue and pine crook. You will see the knee in other episodes. We transferred the shapes of the stations to some thin pattern ply using the traditional flathead nails on edge method, pressing the ply onto the nail heads. Then using nails tacked in those marks to establish the curves we then cut to. Then we marked the moulds using these patterns on thick plywood and cut them out. The transom was glued together with splines in grooves and then planed and sanded. Then we marked out the centre line and water lines to assist in setting it up correctly and the shape was drawn on it cutting it to the forward face of the transom, which is larger than the aft face. We set up the keel and the keel batten machined from celery top pine on the jig using spacer blocks to give the exact height at each station. As always, we did a dry fit of the T-section combination with a few screws and then spread epoxy glue on both surfaces and fitted the combination to the jig. A bit of a glue clean up and we knocked off for the day, day four. The next day we erected the stem and the transom, carefully locating them at the correct height and angle. Then we erected the first mould, station three, the middle one. Then we fitted the rest of the moulds, making sure they were plumb, square to each other and at the right height. We locked them in place with diagonal braces so it was all quite rigid. So that was the first week out of eight. Next episode, we'll line off for the planking. That is, we'll decide exactly where the planks are going to go, and then we'll get down to planking in hue and pine. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode on Spitz Boatshed Channel.